Okay, so just played a, a set of games on on my phone. Uh, so obviously played them silently. I just played them when I'm traveling around on the bus and walking, sitting in the in the park, that type of stuff. So pretty interesting games. Uh, free zero, and let's see how we get on. I'm just doing the over narration just to take myself through what actually happened in the games. Hopefully find a bit of learning for myself as we go on. Okay, so played as white in this game. And developing the knight, just making space for potential castling, bringing the knight up, supporting the pawn, blocking from the bishop attack, and trying to manage the centre with the pawns, supporting the pawn because if the bishop takes, then obviously the bishop will be able to take, able to take the pawn. Bring the queen through now, supporting the pawn, and again looking to put a bit of pressure onto the knight. Knight jumps into the centre, we need to prevent the bishop from exiting through to our king, so we take, so we're playing it almost like it's a bullet match, and don't mind doubling the pawns in this situation. Looking for king safety in this sort of area. They're looking to put pressure onto our bishop. So we're just not wanting to give them that tempo. And seeing if we can open up space in front of their king. Get ready for the rooks to attack their queen potentially. And at this point there's the long pause. I always panic when there's a long pause going on. And I think there's some tactical thing. King safety is key so we go and castle. Now we're looking to try and exchange the pieces off and try and block off this centre pawn that they've got in the um, on the board, supported by their queen. Doesn't look too frightening because our queen can block it, etc. Um, we just need to mobilise rooks and stuff, try to uh, line up against their queen potentially. But at this moment in time, we're doing our own long pawns, which is good because we're really concerned about that queen. So bringing the rook lining up against the queen shouldn't be a problem. So it can easily be blocked off. So now it's about a move order thing. And obviously then dragged my finger across the screen and locked it for a moment. So we're x-raying through to their rook, but are we interested in taking? I think we're wanting to just keep ownership of the file at the minute with the rooks. Because there's still this um, pawn in the centre that might make its way through. He's put a 2 on 1 now onto that pawn. Um, so we're bringing the queen across, but he's still got a 2 on 1 on the pawn. So we're kind of lost out there. Even if the queen does come across, he still can take with his queen or his knight. But they go for the exchange with the rooks, uh, knowing full well we can't support. But we could push the pawn up and support, but they get there before us. So the queen takes and they take. So they're plus one at this moment, but we can start taking pieces off the board and trying to look to improve our position. Now, improving the position for us really is key because they are plus one. And as we've said, just because you're plus one doesn't necessarily mean you've won the game. If you can try and get a half decent position that either forces a draw or you get some type of advantage in the game. So again, we've got the long pause thing going. And we do have a back rank situation here because our king hasn't actually moved. We haven't got space for our king. So that is the worry that I had I do have. And you can I can sense that the opponent is seeing that potential. So if we allow that rook to come down, we might be playing backward chess, which we don't really want. But it does have this past pawn which is going to potentially cause us problem. So we try to get rid of the support because the knight is supporting the pawn at the minute. See whether or not our rook can come across and attack their pawn. That's where then their rook will potentially own the B file with their rook. So that would be the issue. Nice position for their knight because it's blocking the F file. So you can see what the way they were thinking in terms of getting their rook at some point owning this B file and then putting pressure on our king. So we're trying our best, but we bring our rook down, attacking the pawns. In any event, if we do take the pawn, his rook is going to come running onto the B pawn, I'm thinking. But they take our pawn. I think he does take pawn now, yep, with the knight. So now we're starting to edge up. We've got space for our king now, so there's no back rank threat situation going on. So feeling fairly comfortable. At last, now the rook is coming across. Currently, the knight is protecting the square on the B, but it can attack our knight. But we do have space for our king to actually defend the knight, which is also good. So it's a plus because now we're potentially going to be taking this pass pawn off the board with the king. But he's got a 2-on-1 now with the knight. So we could just take the knight off the board. 
and we can then obviously take the pawn off the board. It's not won by any means, but um, we need to find those appropriate positions now. It's even Stevens materially. Looking at the pawn majority at this moment in time, they're plus one. So now we've got put a check on the king. Now we're going to try and basically get rid of his pawn on his A file, which shouldn't be a problem. And even though they're plus one, they're going to have to babysit our pawn because it's highly advanced up the board. And so is theirs. So we're going to have to do the rook captures of each of the pawns. At this stage here, you think, well, they're plus one. They should win. They've offered a draw. And at this point in time, I'm thinking, looking time-wise, because the time factor is a crucial thing in chess, especially with zero increment. If you've got 10 second increment, then really you're not going to lose out because you, you can get that time back. But playing zero increment games, if the opponent has used up their time thinking and over, well, overthinking, there was lots of pauses in there, you can jostle, you can jostle your pieces and hopefully you win on time. So basically they resigned this particular game. So interesting development and the key factor really was about time management and that was a crucial part of this particular game. Okay, this is a second game. We're playing as black, three and oh. So push through the center, blocking the pawn and just uh, supporting the pawn. So we can move fairly swiftly depending on what the opponent does. And this is all pretty straightforward. We're bringing the bishop out, stopping the fried liver attempt with the knight. And uh, yet another one doing a bit of long pausing. So we can capture the pawn in the center. Knight takes and we're just going to push the pawn because we're familiar with that. Because we don't want the center pawn pushing down. So we grab, don't mind doubling the pawns in this situation. So obviously looking at getting king, king safety and um, bringing the knight out. And actually just going castling if we can. Don't need to lose tempo on that, but it depends on what the opponent does. But I don't think there's an issue of just going simply castling. So the white square bishop doesn't have any protection on it at the minute, but um, there's very strange movement here. And at this point, you think, well, what is the tactic? And then looking at the position, I'm thinking, I don't know, that looks like a bit of a silly move. It doesn't look like it's given them anything, but you still got to play on. They're still playing on. So we attack the bishop. And we've got to think king safety, the king queen is going to somehow try and hit the queen king. So I'm not really seeing the full benefits of what they've done, but we attack the queen. We're going to get the bishop off the ball, but potentially we can't move the bishop yet because we're going to be x-rayed through. So it looks like then a bit of panic sets in where I'm thinking, oh no, we're going to lose the bishop. Because the pawn's just going to drop down onto the bishop. What do we do? Yeah, so a smaller piece attacking the higher piece and the queen probably just looking to take the bishop off the board and some sort of exchange going on. And um, I'm thinking, wow, this was a strange opening, but it looks like we might be materially up if they continue on. It does look frightening because their queen is in front of our king. There's a long pause going on, so I'm hoping, well, with the long pause, as mentioned in... The, yes, so they've gone for the Queen Exchange, so we can capture. And at this point in time, it's fairly even Stevens. Very weird. Yeah, I was thinking, what is going on here? This is so odd, but there's, we're equal in material and everything. Our position is not the best, and... Our rooks aren't linked in, but that B-pawn has got no protection. So we just take this off the board, potentially looking for the rook to just put a, a bit of a taste on the pawn here. Try to get some sort of semblance. The bishop can put a check on their king, um, but it's nothing major at this moment in time. So we'll put a check on the king. My pieces are all over the place. They've got a piece, a, a knight, a pawn, sorry, on the B, sorry, G. So we can take that. So our knight can now jump into that lovely F2 square and put a check on the king. So that's all we're looking at at this moment in time. A little bit of like fried liver looking type manoeuvres. Not really a fan of them, but you know, if it's there, it's there. So we can put a check on the king. So in essence, if the queen did move, king did move, we'd be able to get the rook off. But either way, we've got the rook off. So it's still three pieces against three pieces. Yeah, they've got like a rook, a knight and a bishop. The rook's under threat at the minute. 
Rook can just take the pawn off the board. Can we look to try and um, do a skewer? Because we can now look to trade down because we've got stronger pieces on the board, two flat rooks. So we can take the knight off the board. They do have a bishop, can put a check on, but he's not actually... Um, I didn't have to move my king then because I could have just brought the bishop back and put the bishop in front of the king and realised that when I'd moved the king. So we lost the bishop for nothing really there. So now we're looking to try and back rank the guy and it looks like that's all done. So that was a scrappy, scrappy game indeed. Totally all over the shop. Um, I'm half impressed with the way that they attacked, but I'm not because it didn't give them the best position, but I don't think I took full advantage of the situation. So quite a few missed opportunities there. But yeah, good game. Okay, this third game, playing as black. And just again, supporting the pawn with the knights, grabbing the pawn and just basically making sure we don't get fall foul of the center pawn. So developing the knight. So this is a very quick game indeed. It's almost like a bullet match, bringing the bishop out, attacking the queen, baiting the pawn and bringing the bishop back to a nice position and castling king safety. So it's very quick. Now we're just pushing the pawn up just to give space for the rook. Attacking the B-pawn, giving them something to think about. Rook can attack the B-pawn, thinking, yeah, does the rook really want to stay there? So we can capture this pawn, but mindful that the bishop can actually take and get the queen off the board. Moving too quick, so now we've, we've got two rooks. We're going to continue on because we've seen these done, where you know the two rooks can work against the queen, depending on the position on the board. So I'm not getting a flap, I'm thinking, let's get some practice in. So we've got a rook facing their queen, bring the rook down, attacking their knight. Bring the bishop up, basically, to attack their rook. So a lot of x-raying going on. So now we're looking at position, putting pressure towards their king. Even though they've got a queen, we can start putting pressure and look to get their queen off the board. If we do take the knight, etc., could bring, yep, so take in, so they don't take with the queen, they're wanting to save the queen. So now can we condense this king in somehow? So we throw this pawn here just to make more space around the king. It's like a sacrificial pawn. Just to make that little bit of space, and now the bishop can put a check on the king. Probably look to get the knight into the game, bringing the knight across, and again, rub my finger across the screen. So knight's looking to jump into the spot on the H, but the queen can actually take it off the board. Yep, so again, small potatoes, but maybe big rewards. So now the knights jump in to attack the king again, and the queen can take it off the board. Why does the queen not want to take it off the board? Because we're probably going to be putting more pressure with our rooks. But still, I think the queen could have taken the rook off the board and the knight off the board. So now we're looking to get the queen with an x-ray and then this fancy move here i was like oh you're joking me what is that it's blocked us so we're gonna have to bring the other rook into the game put a bit of pressure onto the pawn maybe is there a better position yes attacking the pawn in front of the king queen's coming down looking to go for some sort of repetition i think so the only thing we're looking at here is like a draw type thing if anything Time-wise, they're way ahead of us. They were moving like lightning, really. So it's um, we're just trying to jostle position. Don't really want to lose on time. Can we get a draw out of this if we can? Like we said, this was a nice practice session, really. And so just moving up and down. And he's, yeah, we're looking for that draw, potentially. Only, only person that could not make it a draw is the opponent if they were trying to do other moves that weren't like putting my check in king, putting my king in check. So yeah, so it ended up being a draw. So quite pleased with that one, but not pleased with like the development towards it because obviously losing the queen, being in a bad position and, but it shows these scrappy type games, you can still use the chess concepts to try and um, win over a better position type thing, even if you have lost your queen. Okay, this one playing as black. So blocking the pawn as usual. 
developing the knight, supporting the pawn, bringing the bishop out, stopping the fried liver, developing the knight, making space for castling, castling king safety. Just pushing the pawn, opening up the white square bishop to attack the white square bishop. Just grabbing the pawn, making space for our rooks on this uh, f file, and looking to attack, cause some disturbance, giving the some opponent something to think about. And they're in on the gold, but they're going for a higher piece, which is good, but they haven't developed the other pieces. That's the positive I'm looking at on that side. Always got to have a kind of different spin on things. If things don't look like they've gone right, uh, you have to try and feel that you can make it right somehow. So we attack the queen and take. So we've got a knight and a rook versus two rooks, two flat rooks. So we've got a flexible knight. So now in this um, particular game, I'm thinking, well, how can we manage to get to the level of a draw? Yeah. And then maybe try and get some advantage. So developing the knight, trying to use the flexibility of the knight. Rooks don't have any place in the center of the board is our psychology. So this rook that they've put on the G file, I'm, I'm hoping just kind of loses them any momentum in the game. So we're just pushing forward now towards their um, was king side. And another rook is in the center of the board. So um, again, I'm thinking, well, how, how is that going to work for them? It surely shouldn't be able to work for them. Uh, so we need, so they bring the rook back, obviously using a little bit more um, science to think, well, that's not in the right place. So now we're jostling just to see if we can open up some space towards their king, but they start hitting our knight area in the center first. So we can grab and the rook is in the, in the center. And it's now looking to take the pawn here. So they're giving us things to think about. But positionally, is it working? So we bring the knight across and support the pawn. So now we've got to be thinking about supporting this D pawn. Yep, so we've got two pieces that can support the king and the rook. We're also supporting the pawn on the A. So the rook is looking to attack our king. So we can look to defend the king either by bringing the rook up or moving the king out of the way and moving it up. But we bring the rook up just to prevent that type of thing. Again, the rook to me is in the center of the board. And then we do have a space for our knight to attack their rook. It's just that we could lose our pawn on the A. So very mindful of that. So they come back again attacking the pawn because they've got a two on one with the rooks on the D pawn. Now they're looking to open up space around the um, B and A file. Which is makes sense, you know kind of a pawn majority they had there so now we can move the knight across but we can lose the pawn on the a and they do take that and for a brief moment i did think oh that might have been a bit of an error but if we can start pushing forward we might be able to gain a kind of drawn type position if they make a mistake they've got all these pawns on the far side they should in theory get those pawns down but these are the types of games you want to practice. You, you might be losing, but you still got to practice because the opponent might make a mistake. You know, positionally, they might struggle. So you have to keep going. So we bring the knight across now with the flexibility of the knight. I mean, the rook really, I think, probably should have just taken the knight. So that's why I was thinking, well, if he takes it, then it's game over, really. Um, because his king can just fly down and he's got this extra pawn here. My king is going to be always on the B and A trying to sort these pawns out. His king would have had time to come down on the F, G and H um, and wipe us out. But they haven't taken the knight off the board, which I think was the mistake. As far as I can see up to this point anyway. So we can take pieces off the board while they're dancing around with the pawns over the far side. So how do we deal with that? We can bring the knight across and the knight obviously can look to basically... Uh, defend that area for a brief moment looks impossible i'm thinking this is an impossibility i can't defend this he's just going to get promoted so there's nothing much i can do but we have a fork on the king so we can take the pawn off the board without any trouble and then we have a fork on the rook so we can take the rook off the board without any trouble so now the knight just needs to basically put another fork on the king and get the other pawn off the board. I felt kind of sorry for the king. and Because it's really a draw now. So we get another fork. And then it's a draw. 
fabulous way of getting a draw. Um, really entertaining. Really and truly, you know, the Rook could have simply just taken our Knight off the board and that, that would have been the game over. But you never can tell in these chess games. These things happen. Okay, playing as black in this game. So blocking the pawn, as usual. And feeling like the opponent's moving a bit slower, so that's good for us. And they're coming down with a strange pawn move. So obviously coming to pressure the king area with the pawn, but I'm thinking, are they losing tempo in terms of developing the other pieces? So just gently bringing the bishop out. Still probably going to castle kingside um, because I'm not too afraid of the pawns that are pushed down. They haven't got any major pieces there yet. So just grabbing the pawn off the center and castling. So they'll still have to put a bit of work in towards our king area if they're looking to put pressure. So developing the knight, see whether or not they're going to take. So it's like baiting the bishop, what, what you're wanting to do. So we can bring the bishop through now with the support of the knight attacking the bishop, and the queen, sorry, the higher piece. So it was if, buts and maybes. If they don't take, then the bishop can come across and attack the queen because it's got the support of the knight. So having to think quickly because it's a quick game, but the opponent's gone for a long pause, which is good. Uh, losing them a bit of time. Now we're, we're overthinking the situation here. Do we get the knight out? I think we're looking to move the knight, supporting the knight. Now we're thinking, eh, does the white square bishop get trapped because they could push the pawn onto the knight and you know the bishop's got no protection and maybe we can sit it in front of the pawn that's on the H. So a lot of things going on in the back of my head at this moment in time. It looked nice initially to attack the queen, but now are we in a good position? Are they simply just going to attack the knight with the pawn? So they attack the bishop. We could simply just take the bishop off the board, really. I mean, uh, if the rook takes, it's in the centre of the board. If the knight takes, it's on the rim. Is there a better position for us? The knight could attack their queen, but no, simply capturing the, the bishop off the board. It's not going to hurt us too much. So we're still consciously thinking, well, how are they going to put pressure towards our king area with their pieces? They not, don't look like they're working together at the minute. Making space for our queen now, just pushing the pawn. So maybe the queen can squeeze through and put pressure onto their king. Their knight doesn't have any protection. So if our queen gets to the b b6, then it could actually line up and attack their knight and put a check on the king. But that doesn't take place. So simple captures and captures. But the queen still does have that diagonal going towards their king and putting a check on their king if we go for the b6. So I'm still eyeing that up in my head. Back of my head, I'm like, yeah, I think that might be the way to go. Yep, so we bring the queen up. It's attacking the pawn, but really we're focused on trying to go for this g1 with a check on the king just to give them something to think about. Maybe getting these pawns off that are in front of our king. Our dark square bishop's not really in the game at the minute. And they see this, so they block us off, but we're looking to see if we can still open up that diagonal. So we attack the pawn again. And it pushes down, but we still want to see if we can get a little gateway into that G1 square. So we push the pawn up. Obviously, we're probably expecting the queen to come and um, attack, which they do. And we can take the pawn at the top, or we can take the queen. But we decided, quick game, they're losing time. And... I'm thinking positionally, it's not too bad and they are losing time because they're putting a lot of thought into their thinking. So hopefully, fingers crossed, time is going to be on our side in this particular game. So now we've got a, well, a semi-pass pawn supported by a rook. We could look to lean on their knight, but their rook is defending and their pawn is defending at the moment. But their time is running down, so at this moment, I'm... Um, kind of resigning myself to the fact that they're not really going to claw the time back it's a zero increment so you have to play you know the game that is given to you which is zero increments so we're still looking at how can we support the attack going towards their king so we push the pawn up looking to support the pawn pushing further up onto the c3 Dark square bishop's not in the game at the minute, but it doesn't have to rush. So the knights move, so we can put pressure onto the pawn. Their time is totally running out. 
and it'll take a long while for them to really gain any advantage now with only two seconds left on the game. So looking to double up the rooks uh, behind the pawn and we can continue with that motion and white timed out. So again, another game of time management and it's really utilizing the tools that you're given in the game that you're playing. If it's zero increment, if you're managing your time nicely, you still have to try and find half decent positions. I'm not saying this is winning, it's just we will move in obviously a little bit quicker than the opponent or the opponent rather was moving a lot slower than what we were. Okay, so we were playing as white in this game. So pushing through the center, e4, developing the knight, and looking to push through the center, see if we can manage this center and we can grab. So yeah, rule of thumb, you don't, usually don't move the same piece twice, but feeling fairly safe with this knight maneuver, nothing really challenging it at this moment in time. Don't think I've lost any tempo. And I, I'm just looking at the time factor. The opponent's taking a while over the moves and then they're suddenly moving quickly. So we're having to really get a focus on our time factor, trying to stay ahead of them time-wise. So bringing the pawn up, supporting the um, pawn with the bishop, making space for castling, but I'm always aware that I really want to have pieces around my king, you know, to give my king some company as well. And don't have to suffocate it, but just be around it to make sure that if everything's um, covered off. And again, looking at this time, I'm thinking, well, we might again get advantage in, in this game via the time it's a zero increment so they attack our knight so we can quickly move the knight they move the bishop quick we can castle so they i think they're understanding now they're under a bit of time pressure so now just pushing the pawn up just supporting any potential attacks that might be need supporting or also stopping the bishop from coming down attacking the knight waited <clears throat> waited for any sacrifices from the bishop but that didn't come through so we move the knight across, making more company for our king, giving space for the A, B and C pawns to potentially move up the board. We move this pawn up a little bit, the A pawn, to take it away from the bishop, so the rook potentially can line up in front of the queen for an x-ray. Because it's on the C file, unprotected at the minute, if it all kicks off. Again, looking at the time. So now they're supporting the queen, looking to double up on this same um, pawn. But we do have the bishop and we do have the queen there. So we can simply now look to tra transfer the attack area towards their king area. And looking at the time factor, again, we're ahead on time. But we don't want to be under them really on time because uh, it is at zero increment. So what is the key thing really about developing knights across towards our king area making space so we can potentially attack their king area with such things as like the f pawn and as they're going for the long pause again we're, we're hoping and praying they do not manage their time correctly but we still have to find those appropriate positions because you know if they're like a bullet specialist they they will win out if they're finding favorable positions moving really quickly it doesn't look like this player's getting into them realms and now they're under one minute with zero increment our focal point is the f4 pawn attacking their pawn on the e depends on what the opponent does next though we seem to have covered off a a half decent defense for our pieces our queen is still on the back so in essence that might need to change but there's no pressure at this moment in time we're looking to try and establish an attack towards their king area and as their time is running out even more uh, there's more chances that we could gain advantage in the game so they're down now down to 17 seconds so really it's going to be an impossible task even if you're a bullet specialist to actually gain an advantage from this position pieces aren't that highly developed so in essence really they're going to kind of lose on time sometimes it happens you can't find a move to make you know and um, so they timed out on this occasion yeah this was the last game we played playing as black 
So push through with the queen pawn. Develop the knight. Attacking the pawn. The queen is defending at the minute. And getting the white square bishop out. So obviously at this point then the e pawn is going to be moving. The bishop's going to make space for the king. Going to get castled. King safety. And we will be fully developed in that sense. The opponent's moving a bit slow, a bit measured, but we're okay with that. As we've seen before, if they want to lose on time, that's fine for us. So bringing the bishop out, seeing as nothing's attacking our knight, may as well bring the bishop out into the game a little bit more. And then we castle, king safety. So at this point there's nothing clear but there's areas that can be attacked we could attack the knight could bring the bishop back just to take it out of the frame for a bit for a moment so now they're attacking looking to try and manage the center as best possible the knight has gone a little bit far out on the, in the center looking maybe to attack the bishop the dark square bishop but we can easily take with the queen so we're kind of waiting for them to overextend in a sense. We've not overextended our pieces yet. We haven't jumped in with the knight at the moment. So a small piece attacking that knight just to say, well, what are you actually doing? And we're just waiting for it to actually take the bishop. But again, they're losing time, kind of overthinking the position. Maybe struggling to find the right move. And they don't actually take the bishop, so they bring it back. So I'm hoping that that's a loss in tempo in terms of movement. Our knight could actually go and attack, or the bishop could attack the rook. So it's a bit condensing the rook in, but it's not actually getting the rook. It can move. We don't want to trap our bishop. And um, we're hoping that the knight takes and the bishop does take back. It's still x raying through to their bishop. And we can take their bishop off the board. And now their knight is really kind of home alone. So the queen can actually take the knight. And then there's a long pause again. Does the king take? Normally the king would just take the bishop. But he's actually come for a, a mate threat. Yep. So the queen is actually coming down. Attacking the pawn on H. So then that would be like a checkmate. So we can push the pawn onto the knight. So he's got a piece under attack. The bishop no longer. Well the king can take the bishop. And we can take the knight. Could take it with the queen. Or can take it with the pawn. And we can take with the pawn, it's no problems. They're losing time, so I'm thinking time might be on our side here. We are a minor piece up, looking at the situation. So we can just simply take and look to see if we can get their queen. Could bring the queen across and just attack. Yeah, then, yep, yeah, and then they... At that point in time, it's just really about seeing whether they're going to exchange, because they're losing time. All we need to do is try and just keep a very basic, simple defensive position as best possible with our pieces. The knight doesn't have any protection on, but it does have a, sca a square to jump to, or two squares to jump to. So they've gone and attacked the um, knight that has got no protection as we were just talking, but it does have space to actually move. Our rook is defended, so the diagonal for the queen is not going to impact on the rook. So we can now look to just, as we said, Keep a defensive, maybe counter-attacking position just to give them things to think about. But not really overextending in any way because their time is definitely running out. Our king's got enough company. Bishop's protecting this pawn at the minute. We can bring the knight up and it's basically attempting to try and see if there's any forks anywhere. And at this moment, can't really see any per se, but their time is running out. So it's giving them things to think about which is a good thing, and we're doubly protecting the pawn anyway. And the rook's coming down. Rook in the centre of the board really doesn't have any place. Is it sacrificing itself? Probably just to try and give us something to think about. They've only got 12 seconds, so I think there's going to be some manic movements going on here. That's what I'm thinking. I'm just thinking, well, what are they going to do? So we can take the pawn because the pawn can't take back and it's got the support from the knight as the bishop. So we can do anything funky now because they've only got three seconds left. So like we said, he's just taken with the rook. Just take. It's got one second left now. Not much happening. And then the timeout. So I think the last three games basically have just been around um, time management. You know, playing these games on the phone. But you know, it's nice bit of practice, you know. And yeah, good session.